Hi everyone, in this chapter we're going to be talking about decision logic structures. In other words, um, what to do if your course of action in your application needs to be different depending on some conditions. So not every application is going to run the exact same every time you, uh, every time you open it up. Sometimes you want your application to do one thing or a different thing depending on what your user inputs. So I'm going to use a running example for this chapter of an application that calculates an employee's bonus. And the bonus that they get is going to be different depending on uh, some input factors such as their number of hours or their number of sales or something like that. We'll, uh, we'll go through those types of examples in this chapter. So the objectives across the four videos that make up this chapter's lecture are to understand logic planning tools and decision making, such as flowcharts. I'm not going to get into flowcharts a whole lot. Some of the other professors um, spend a lot of time on flowcharts, and I think flowcharts are important, and I highly recommend them. But I'm not going to spend a lot of my time in my lectures about them, but I do recommend that you use them. We're going to talk about how uh, an application makes a decision using if and if else statements. Um, both simple and complex. I'm going to touch on the switch statement and you'll see the, re, uh, the purpose and the uses of a switch statement. We'll talk about some comparison operators, um, not only the greater than, less than, equal to, also the not operator and the conditional operators such as and and or. And I'll give you some tips and hints for avoiding common mistakes and uh, hopefully help you to get some good practice with decision structures in your programming code. Well, I'm going to start by mentioning the importance of pseudocode and flowcharts. Pseudocode is a tool that helps programmers plan a program's logic by writing plain English statements. So you've seen already in some of my examples that I've, I've done some of this. Sometimes I just write lines out in comments so I have an idea of what my program needs to do. And then I go back and replace those comments with actual code. That is a good practice, particularly um, as your applications get more and more complex and involve a lot of different logic and ifs and elses and um, some of the other things we're going to be covering in subsequent chapters. It's a good idea sometimes to plan out ahead using pseudocode exactly the structure of your code, and then you go back line by line and replace it with actual C-sharp code. Flowcharting is a visual way to conceptualize your application program before you write it in code, and you do that with a series of shapes and arrows, such as the flowchart here. Now here is a sequential flowchart. So this is the example of if you're giving directions to someone, you give them one direction first, you go west, then you turn left, then you enter the expressway, then you exit south, then you proceed. So it's just a straightforward flowchart. So if we were to flowchart any of the programs that we've done up to this point in the course, the flowchart would look something like this, because we just do one step, then continue to the next one, continue to the next one, continue to the next one. So what we're talking about in chapter four is what if there's different courses of action based on some value. So in this example from the textbook, uh, this is an example of giving directions again. First you go west, then you turn left, but then you have to make a decision. Is the expressway backed up? Well, if it is, maybe you want to do a course of action that's written there on the right-hand side. And if it's not, then you want to take the course of action that's written over on the left-hand side. So this is a visual way to map out the directions that you're giving, even when those directions include some sort of decision-making process and alternative paths. I highly recommend that you use flowcharting. Um, if you have, um, such as an assignment for this chapter, or you're coming up with a program where you need to use um, some sort of decision-making, I highly recommend that you write it out on paper first on a flowchart to get a better conceptual idea of what your code is going to look like. So just as kind of a foreshadowing, if you were creating an application and uh, 
the path looks something like this with a decision, then you would know visually by looking at this, okay, I'm going to have a few lines of code that are just going to be straightforward. And then I'm going to have an if statement and uh, I'm going to put whatever statements are over here um, inside my curly braces for my if statement. And over here, these are going to go inside my curly braces for my else statement. So that's just a foreshadowing, assuming that you've already read the textbook and have a vague idea of if and else statements. If not, you'll understand what I just said in just a few moments after I explain um, the structure of using if statements in C Sharp code. All right, even when we get to really super complex programs, they can usually be boiled down to a set of yes or no decisions. Um, a simple yes or no decision can be made using an if statement in C Sharp code. Um, a, a block is something that we refer to uh, when we're talking about a set of statements that are included inside a pair of curly braces. So each if statement has a block associated with it. And right before that block is the control statement. So in this case, we have a flowchart where we're examining if a number is less than five. If it is, we want our program to write A. And then at the end, no matter whether the number is less than or, or greater than five, we want the program to write B. So here is a very simple if decision structure in C Sharp code. So we have the keyword if followed by parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we have what is called our control statement. A control statement is a statement that can be evaluated as true or false. So C Sharp evaluates whether the number is less than five. If it is, then this is evaluated as true. And if it's not, it's evaluated as false. If whatever is in the control statement is true, then the computer will execute whatever follows the if statement. So in this case, the block is uh, the statement right line A. And then right line B is outside of the if block. Here, I don't really like this example from the textbook because they haven't included the curly braces. This is still valid in legal C Sharp code, but I think it's best practice to every single time include the curly braces, even if what you want to happen inside of your if statement is only one statement long. Okay, a common mistake that students make is putting a semicolon after their control statement. What do you think would happen if the programmer put a semicolon there? Well, if you think about it carefully, what's happening in this code is the if statement um, first evaluates if the number is less than five. If it is less than five, then it does whatever follows that until you get to a semicolon. So basically what this erroneous code is saying is if number is less than five, then do nothing and then continue on. So no matter what the number is, it's going to write A and then it's going to write B. So don't put a semicolon after your control statement. Okay, most of the time you have dual alternative decisions. So you have something that you want to happen if the statement is true and you also want something to happen if the statement is false. So here's where we get to if else statements. Here's a simple example and I will jump over to Visual Studio in just a moment to show you some examples of my own. But here we see if um, is project under budget is true, then a bonus is given of 200, else a bonus is given of zero. Okay. So you can have an if statement on its own without an else, but in my experience, 90% of the time, you're also gonna have an else statement. So you want something to happen if it's true, you want something different to happen if it's false. So pretty much all of the examples that I'm gonna do are gonna have an else. Um, but you might come across some 
scenario somewhere down the line on your own where you might use an if statement without an else, and that is totally fine. So one thing I want to point out in this um, example is the expression in the control statement here. This is the name of a Boolean variable. Okay. So is project under budget is a Boolean variable that either holds the value of true or the value of false. Okay. So inside of your if control statement, you can put anything that can be evaluated as true or false. So it could be uh, something equals something else, could be true or false, something is greater than something else, could be true or false, uh, the name of a Boolean variable or excuse me, a Boolean variable itself could be holding the value of true or false. All right, here's just another example of using a flowchart and then how you would convert that flowchart into an if else statement. So if the number is greater, if the variable, excuse me, if the value being held in the variable named number is higher than the value being held in the variable named high, then you write the number is greater than. If it's not, then you write the number and then um, is not greater than. Okay, so in the code, you, we've put um, what happens if it's true directly after the if control statement and what happens if it's false Director directly after the else keyword. Okay, a few more notes before I jump over and show you an example. Uh, here's another common mistake that beginners make. Uh, when you're doing a comparison in a control statement, do not use a single equal sign. So for example, if you were creating an if statement and you wanted something to happen if the number was equal to three, then you need to put num equals equals three. When you're doing a comparison and you wanna use equals as an equal sign in an equation that's gonna be evaluated as true or false, you have to put two equal signs together. You cannot type if num equals three with a single equal sign because what this will confuse C sharp because the equal sign is used as an assignment operator. It's saying, okay, we're trying to assign the value three to the variable named num, okay. that doesn't get evaluated as true or false. You're just telling C Sharp to give this variable a certain value. When you're doing a comparison that you want to evaluate as true or false, you have to use the double equal sign. All right, so I'm going to do several examples before I jump into them. Just want to note the not operator. So anytime you see an exclamation point in C sharp code, it means do the opposite of whatever follows. So if whatever is in the control statement is evaluated as true, the exclamation point before it makes it false and vice versa. This can come in handy sometimes, but it can also get confusing as your brain tries to work around the logic of doing the opposite of what you have written. So be careful with it um, and use it when it's needed, but uh, just think very carefully, very logically about what you're doing if you choose to include a not operator. All right, let's go ahead and do an example. So here I am in Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to create a Windows Forms app and I'm going to call it Employee Bonus. Make sure that it's being saved to a location on my computer where I can find that later. It's already in the directory where I want to save it. So I'm just going to press OK. Now, while this is loading, I'll just tell you, in this example, I'm going to create an application where the user can input how many hours they worked. And if the number of hours they worked was over 40, then we will give them a bonus. So I've got a form here, and I'm going to come over to my toolbox and under common controls, I'm going to put a text box. 
Get it over on the right. I am going to, in the properties box, find the name property and rename that to hours text box and hit enter. I'm going to put a label on my form telling the user what to do with that text box. So in the text property of that label, I'm going to replace label one with, please enter number of hours worked. I'm going to put a button on my form And uh, I'm going to change the name property to calculate button. And the text property to calculate your bonus. Just a long text for a button, so I'll just make your, the button bigger. And then down at the bottom, I will put a label where we can tell the user what their bonus is. So that um, I'm going to change the name property to be bonus label. And I'm going to change the text property to be your bonus is. Now I want to actually put the programming logic into this application, so I'm going to double click on my button. And that will switch me over to code view. And it has created an event, a click event method called calculate button click. So when the user clicks on the button, whatever program code I put inside of this block is going to execute. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take what the user inputs in that text box and I'm going to convert it to a number. So I'm going to uh, declare a double variable, double because people could work parts of hours. You know, they could say I worked 31.25 hours. And I'm going to call it num hours. And that is going to be whatever the user put in the text box hours text box dot, don't forget the dot text. But I'm going to put that inside parentheses because I'm going to convert that string to a double. Get number of hours from text box. OK. Now I want to declare a variable, which is uh, their bonus. Okay, that's anytime you think about, oh, there's a number or there's a piece of text that I have to work with. Probably the first step is to declare or initialize a variable to represent that number or text. I know that we're going to be calculating a bonus, and so I am going to declare a variable of type double and call it bonus. I'm not going to initialize it here. I'm just going to declare it because the value of that bonus depends on what the user input uh, in the text box. So now let's say that the user gets, or excuse me, the employee gets a $25 bonus if they worked over 20 hours so uh, because I know that the calculation depends on some decision, I'm going to create an if statement. So I'll type the keyword if, and then follow it with parentheses for my control statement. And then following that, there will be a block parentheses inside my if statement. 
So my control statement is really the condition that I'm basing my decision on. So I'm basing this decision on how many hours they worked. If, they, if the number of hours that they worked, so this is the double variable, is greater than 20, then I'm going to assign the value 25 to the bonus variable. So I already declared this variable. Now I'm just assigning it a value if the number of hours is greater than 20. So let's test that out. Actually, let me put a comment on there first. Okay, in the debug menu, I'm gonna click start without debugging. Sometimes it takes a few seconds to load it up. There it goes. So now if I test this out, if I put uh, 21 hours and click the button, Nothing happens. Now, the reason for that is because I forgot to finish out the example. So it has actually calculated the bonus, but I've never displayed that on the screen. So I want to do some programming to put uh, the bonus uh, actually on the screen so the user can see it. Jump back to my code. OK. Now I'm going to display the bonus to the user. So I called that label bonus label. I'm going to assign to the text property of that label the text your bonus is and then the value of the bonus converted to a string and formatted as currency. Ah, okay. Uh, it's give, it's showing me that I have an error here. If I put my mouse over the keyword, or not the keyword, the variable named bonus, it says use of unassigned local variable bonus. So what C Sharp is saying is up here I declared a, a variable named bonus. It doesn't have any number associated with it. If the number of hours is greater than 20, then the bonus is 25, but I've never specified what happens if the bonus is, or excuse me, if the number of hours is less than 20. So there is a chance that if the user inputs a number that is less than 20, then bonus is still not going to be assigned a value. And so C Sharp is saying, there's a good chance that this variable is not gonna have a value. And so uh, I can't convert it to, to a string unless it has a value in it. So the way around this is instead of only declaring this variable up here, I should have assigned it an initial value, uh, like a default value you could say of zero. Okay. So unless anything else happens, the bonus is zero. And then I can do some additional logic to change that bonus if needed. Now I'm going to test that. So if I put 21 and calculate your bonus, your bonus is 25. If it's less than 20, your bonus is zero. Okay. Now in this control statement, as I mentioned, uh, I did a comparison statement that could be evaluated as true or false. Your options here are you can do greater than, uh, you can do a less than in your control statement, you can do an equals, like I said, you need to do a double equals, 
Uh, these all conceptually do different things. So if you worked less than 20 hours, you get a bonus. If you worked exactly 20 hours, you get a bonus. If you worked exactly 20 or more, you get a bonus. If you worked exactly 20 or less, you get a bonus. And if you worked anything besides 20, the exclamation equals means not equal to 20, then you get a bonus. So those are kind of your six basic options. Or instead of using one of those six options, I could have uh, specified somewhere else a Boolean variable that represented this, and I could put the name of the Boolean variable. So those are your different options. I've shown just one example here. Um, but all of the different options basically work the same conceptually. So that's it for this example. I'm going to save this code, and I'm actually going to continue on this code in my next video, but I'll save a copy of what this code looked like at the end of this video, then come back for part two, and I will continue building on this example.